What's up, everybody? Kevin Sargent, KevinSargentMusic.com. I'm here with my dog, Goofy, and also the prehistoric dog, Pedal, from Berserker Electronics. So, back in 1979, the Sun Beta Lead and Beta Bass Solid State Amplifiers were released. And they were pretty much identical with the exception of just a few uh, handful of changes. One for the electric guitar and one for bass guitar. Now, we fast forward to today. The folks over at Berserker Electronics over in Austin, Texas have made pretty much an amalgam of both of those amplifiers put them together into one pedal the prehistoric dog pedal so if you go over to their website berserkerelectronics.com you'll find some amazing uh, video clips demonstrations of bass and electric guitar uh, the pedal has been known it kind of rose to prominence as a distortion pedal, but it's uh, so much more versatile than that. I, and that's what I wanted to showcase. So for the intents and purposes of this video, I wanted to showcase it specifically on a bass guitar in a in-studio situation. So what I have here is an original song, which happens to be bass guitar oriented. It actually starts with a bass guitar riff so it's the perfect track uh, to interview this pedal and what it could do and I have to say I was pretty surprised by the versatility and what I found uh, when I used it so to start with uh, I'm going to jump over here on my bass guitar and we're going to see the difference between just me plugging my bass guitar directly into my recording interface with no pedal and then we'll look at what it sounds like with the prehistoric dog pedal but with everything pretty much set up to noon so not not a lot of drive and then we'll look at it with a little bit of a drive dialed in just to show the versatility of it so I want to take just a moment to mention my favorite part of the pedal with my experience of working with it on a bass guitar here in, in studio. Normally when you start adding low end frequencies such as EQ or even pedals, the more bass you add, you have the tendency for there to be muddiness or the potential for muddiness. Uh, I found it to be the opposite with the prehistoric dog pedal the more low end or bass i i dialed in the more clarity that i got on my tone and that made me really really happy because as as someone who's engineering producing a song here uh, it could really make your day to not have to worry about a, a muddy bass track um, so for me the bass knob alone was worth the price of admission. I would, I would be happy to buy this pedal just for what the bass knob alone does. But we'll, we're going to take a look at the drive feature as well. Okay, for example number one, I'm going to have my bass guitar plugged directly into the recording interface, bypassing the pedal just to get that raw sound. Now, for example, number two, I'm going straight into the prehistoric dog pedal uh, and then into the recording interface. The volume is at 12 o'clock. The drive is at 12 o'clock. The treble is boosted a little bit. The mid is cut. And that bass knob is turned up to 4 o'clock. So 
So as you can hear, the difference between going direct and then using the pedal, even though the pedal was set at 12 o'clock, the volume, and the drive was set at 12 o'clock, so I'm not really adding a whole lot. What a big difference. It really livened up the sound, added some width, added some girth. So what that means for me is it's just that much less I have to do after capturing the sound. Now, of course, with anything, um, as you start adding instruments into the mix and you do the mixing process, of course, there's going to be a little of that adding this or, or cutting that, but it, it really reduced the amount of time that I'm going to have to spend getting a, getting a good bass guitar sound for the track. So real happy with that. So I'm going to do a third example here. And the only thing I'm going to change is I'm, I'm going to boost the drive from 12 o'clock up to about 2, 3 o'clock, so we could hear what it sounds like adding some of that gain, that distortion uh, with the pedal. <laughs> So as you could hear, with the drive boosted, you could hear that gain, that distortion, and that bite. Uh, but it still has the low end, the, the warmth from the bass uh, now being boosted. Uh, I like both takes so much, the one with the, with the gain, or the drive set at 12 o'clock, and the one with the drive set at 2, 2 or 3 o'clock so much. Uh, I'm actually going to use both of them in my song here. I'm going to pan one favorite to one side and then pan the other one favorite to the other side. Not because I think it, it needs the bass doubled or, or that it sounds tinny or anything. It, it, it sounds great. I just like the way uh, both takes sound uh, combined and, and that bite that the drive adds. I think it's a good touch for the song here. So. I'm going to play a clip of that at the end um, of, of this uh, video interview here so you could hear the final product. So in summary, everybody, the prehistoric dog pedal by Berserker Electronics is much more than a one trick pony. Whether we're a guitar player or bass player or both, you'll definitely find something a benefit, whether it be a live application or as I did here in studio. For me the bass knob alone was worth the price of admission. Being able to add in low end without uh, mud and actually clarity to the tone is just what I needed for this track. So I'm going to I'm going to close with the actual song here. And I'll include in the links the uh, website, BerserkerElectronics.com, as well as the link to the written review at GuitarThrills.com. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.